report that has just been presented. I now, therefore, give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran. You have five minutes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, tomorrow is the first day of Iranian New Year and the International Day of Nowruz that is celebrated across the continents. Happy Nowruz to all who celebrate it, and may the spirit of spring and Nowruz bring dignity, honesty, and justice to our world. Mr. President, advocacy for human rights is increasingly mistaken by some states and human rights mandate holders for their unwarranted and egotistic purposes, abusing the human rights mechanisms to single out and target those nations with independent foreign policy is void of any added value for protection of human rights. The Council's mandate is best fulfilled by dialogue and cooperation in accordance with the principles of non-selectivity, objectivity, and impartiality. The Council should distance itself from politicization, stigmatization, and stereotyping, which can only create division and confrontation, and transfer human rights into a tool in line with political agendas of some countries. Mr. President, the allegations made by Mr. Javid Rahman in his report, which are read like a tragic novel, have been repeated by a number of Western governments and their media outlets and terrorist groups stationed in their countries in the past months. They tried to portray their imaginations as the reality of the human rights situation in Iran. Mr. President, Mr. Javid Rahman, in total disregard of his duties under Resolution 5-2, which emphasizes the impartiality of the special rapporteurs, unfortunately, plays the role of the opposition. In all his writings and statements, he uses biased languages and violates the code of conduct of the special mandate holders. Mr. President, the Iranian people witnessed nearly three months of terrorist attacks and armed riots. However, Mr. Rahman did not even mention the Daesh terrorist attack on a religious site in Shiraz, which left 13 innocent women, children, and ordinary people murdered. He also refrained from writing and speaking about the armed attacks on people in different provinces, the murder of passerby and over 50 security forces, who were violently martyred with stones, wood, iron, and live bullets used by the terrorist groups. Albeit all detainees, except those who have committed murder and have private complaints, have been released, Javid Rahman has totally ignored this fact and is still repeating the request for the release of the rioters. Mr. President, Last year, the Special Rapporteur and UCM paid a visit to Iran. During her 12-day stay in Iran, Madame Alena Duhan met with all governmental and non-governmental sectors. In her report, presented to the Human Rights Council in September 2022, she explicitly touched upon the human rights violations of the Iranian people especially the patients by UCMs. Was there a mention of her report in Javid Rahman's writing, which is supposed to be neutral? Well, you know the answer. <laughs> Mr. President, in a hybrid war, more than 120 TV channels, 100 radio stations, as well as dozens of websites and social networks, lack their focus on the Iranian youth and children. They encourage them to make bombs by teaching them about armed conflict. Recently, they have even attempted to construct a new scenario for pupils by poisoning them. 
we have distributed around 40 reports among all missions and, and human rights mechanisms in Geneva to elaborate on the realities on the ground. We sent our comments on the recent report of Mr. Rahman directly to the President of the Council and all missions. Mr. President, it is a sheer hypocrisy that the perpetrators of crimes against Iranian people advocate for the human rights of the Iranian and table draft resolutions against Iran while depriving the same people of their basic rights to health, to education, and to life.